Area like this is sort of a weather good guy. It just keeps the weather good for several days on end. And actually, as we see this thing slide a little further east tomorrow, start to get the wraparound flow. Winds will start to come out of the south. That's going to be a warmer breeze. Should begin to push temperatures up. Free. 800 588 Today. There are you rolling? Yeah. Cool. Today, there are over 200 varieties of gourmet coffee that have earned the Keurig Brewed Seal of Approval. The Keurig Brewed Seal is our commitment that the coffee inside will deliver a delicious cup of coffee every time. Keurig Brewed. Look for the only mark of genuine Keurig quality. The Tony and Grammy Award-winning musical Jersey Boys is working its way back to you at the National Theater, November 10th through January 7th. Enter for your chance to win tickets. Text the word boys to 622-339 to enter. Standard text messaging rates apply. You rolling? Yeah. Cool. With more than 127,000 students, Prince George's County Public Schools is the second largest school system in Maryland and the 18th largest in the United States. We're here at uh, Blue Collar Cuts here in Beltsville, Maryland. And uh, the reason I brought you guys together is because I really want to look at a child's education holistically, uh, both in terms of uh, their community, um, what's happening in the classroom, uh, the reinforcement of education and the solid groundwork set in the home. District Matters, tapping into the pulse of the people in the DMV to tell the stories that matter most to you. It just seems like it's cyclical mm -hmm. on some level. You don't know where you can break the cycle. There, there are a lot of things that our young people are dealing with today. So if we can change the conditions in which we ask teachers to teach, and we do have control over that. And then bring other people into the school that can talk about uh, what, uh, what it means to achieve, what it means to be successful. District Matters starts now. Nico, Kyle, good morning. Not everybody wakes up to the same day, or even with a clean slate for that matter. Prince George's County reflects a diverse group of students. How do we tap into each of their unique talents, regardless of outside circumstances, and level the playing field? It's a question I pose to some folks from around the way. Again, I'm just here to connect the dots, uh, throw some questions at, at you guys. People think you can have overnight improvements in education, but it's really increments. Look at any blueprint for success and you'll find education is the cornerstone. Still finding quality public education in this country has become somewhat of a luxury. How do we rethink the way we engage students, train teachers, and enlist parents to give our young people the best chance to succeed? It's an exercise happening right here in Prince George's County, Maryland. We all know cases of, of students who achieve uh, despite some of these things. In more cases than not, these things can be indicators of the type of people that, uh, that they can become, both in the classroom and then as productive citizens later on down the road. How do I uh, create kind of a caring classroom environment? I'm Aletta Margolis. I'm founder and executive director of Center for Inspired Teaching. And we work with te teachers to help them learn to be instigators of thought. I'm Reverend Tony Lee. I'm the pastor of the Community of Hope AME Church and um, I'm in Hillcrest Heights, Maryland. And what we have attempted to do is one, see how the faith community uh, can be helpful in the educational process. Benjamin started middle school um, as a great example um, and seeing how the church, whether it's human resources, financial resources, um, can be helpful um, in the educational process. I'm Chris Marsh. I'm an assistant professor at the University of Maryland College Park. I'm a sociologist and a demographer. I study avenues into the black middle class and consequences of being in the black middle class. There isn't another more affluent county with an African-American majority in the country, but it hasn't always translated to quality public education. You can't even say the words Iris Metz without thinking controversy. In 2006, the authenticity of John Deasy's education stole the spotlight away from any achievements of the students he was hired to lead, and he was supposed to be the one to write the ship. After former CEO of schools Andrew Hornsby was indicted and later convicted of wire fraud and obstruction of justice. All have moved on, but oh, not without uh, impacting the, the public's the trust in the uh, public school system. Talented. What I really want to focus on is, is the Prince George's County school system. We know that there has been a bit of a checkered past, but they are improving and they're, they're uh, implementing new programs and doing a lot of different things to try to improve the quality of education. Uh, 
As you mentioned, you're involved in the Stoddard Middle School. What have you seen in terms of the growth happening in Prince George's County? Benjamin Stoddard has been what's turned the turnaround school. Um, I watched a place that was pretty broken and young people and a community that didn't expect much out of the school. Um, and I've been able to watch a principal team, new teachers come in and really change the atmosphere. Our students pursue the promise and we make miracles happen every day. One of the things that gives me a lot of hope is the, uh, the focus that Dr. Height, the superintendent in Prince George's County, has on building teacher capacity, which is going to improve teaching for the long term and empowers teachers to be agents of change in the system rather than to be recipients of somebody's great idea that they can try out and see if it works. So that's something that gives me gives me cause for hope. We have seen a continuous um, improvement in the performance of our students and that speaks to the commitment of all of the teachers in our system and the leaders in our system. According to the latest U.S. Census report, the median household income in 2009 was just over $69,000. Nearly 30% of people 25 and older have earned a bachelor's degree or higher. You take that in comparison with the national average, where only 19% of blacks have college degrees, and things look pretty good. But the numbers don't always reflect the reality of all the residents. What is the difference between the decisions that many black middle class parents have to make in terms of education for their children and their white counterparts? There's three reasons why you see racial residential segregation. It's usually economics, preferences, or discrimination. So for some reason, um, black middle class adults have to decide where they're going to live. Do they want to live in Howard County, where it's more integrated? Uh, there's more diversity, or are they choosing to live in Prince George's County? But once you live in Prince George's County, you then have to decide, where am I going to send my, ch my child to go to school? Because we do know in Prince George's County, the public system school here, the, the school system here, there's, there, there's some challenges that we have spoke about. But I think you're also looking at some of the class dynamics that play even in Prince George's County. Um, from inside the Beltway to outside the Beltway, it's two different worlds. And there's been two different um, levels of access to resources historically um, through county government. And so outside the Beltway, um, is what people say there's gold in them hills. Um, and those people are more fluent, they have a higher educational background, crime is the last, et cetera, et cetera. And most times their needs have been met more effectively even in the schools outside the Beltway. While Prince George's County isn't in the heart of the city, it does border the nation's capital and is urbanesque in terms of makeup. Black and Hispanic students comprise more than 92% of the total student body and more than 67,000 students. More than half of all that attend schools in the county are low income. What are you hearing from young people in terms of the way that they view their education? Just the fact that the whole educational kind of process doesn't seem relevant to them. Um, that, in addition to the fact that they're looking at a generation that's a little bit older than them that was told to go to college and get a good job, and they see them and they've gone to college and they have no job, um, and they're still sitting at home um, while they've got people who have been doing crime or drug use, et cetera, who have the latest clothes, who have the latest car, et cetera. And so I, I think that's kind of some of the confusion right now for them. It is incredibly challenging when kids come with the many obstacles that, that we've just heard about as they enter the school building. One of the key questions I always ask, anytime the teacher's planning a lesson, whether it's on adverbs or history or anything else, the question is, so what, right? Why should a fourth grader, why should a ninth grader care? And the answer cannot be because it's on the test. You had these challenges you had to come through to get to the classroom. Then you're sitting in a classroom where the teacher's having these challenges that to deal with. And then couple that with this really culturally irrele irrelevant curriculum, it just, it just seems like it's cyclical mm -hmm. on some level. You don't know where you can break the cycle. Absolutely. And, and we're going to talk about this when we come back. We have to take a commercial break. But I want to hear about how teachers are almost serving as, as parents in, in some instances like this, where they're being asked to go above and beyond, and many of them are. Uh, stay tuned right here. You're watching District Matters here on NBC. This is a special exclusive, as I mentioned, a combination between Education Nation and District Matters. Keep tuned. Transition, a period of significant change. Often Transition, more... it's all about preparing for effective leadership in the future by building on experience. It means my courses at Graduate School USA will prepare me no matter what lies ahead. Flexibility is just one of the reasons Graduate School USA ranks highest within government agencies. We offer an expanding curriculum and convenient learning modes, all designed to optimize your year-end training resources. Transition is about the future, and I'm getting ready now. Hello? Kelly Regis, is GD Bank open this early? Of course. 
Hello? Kelly Regis. Does TD Bank have good rates on mortgages? Yes. Hello? Kelly Regis, can I get a TD credit card? Yes. Kelly, Kelly, Kelly. Regis, if I were to check my balance. Regis, when I said TD Bank has live 24-7 customer service, I didn't mean me. Oh. Hey, does uh, mustard go bad? Everything you want from the only bank you need. TD Bank, America's most convenient bank. One car company has the whole country talking. It's not Toyota. It's not Honda. It's Hyundai, the new number one in consumer loyalty. Celebrate and save during Hyundai's number one event with the all-new Elantra. Number one fuel economy with a best-in-class 40 MPG. The number one warranty. 10 years, 100,000 miles. And right now, Elantras are only $179 a month. Get to your Washington area Hyundai dealers today. Only Hyundai has it. Bring Empire in to win for a chance to win a day with a Redskins player. Golf, spa, tour a winery, have dinner, it's up to you. If you win, you choose from participating players, active or alumni, and select events. To enter, call Empire and get a free in-home estimate on quality carpet or flooring. Call today and bring Empire in to win. 800-588-2300-EMPIRE Today, official partner of the Washington Redskins. After a series of slips, there's new leadership in town, interested in regaining the community's trust. And according to the newly elected county executive, Rashern Baker, that means investing in our youth and their education. On a recent trip to a local school, it became very evident this emphasis on hitting the books and hitting them hard trickles from the top down. Hmm. My inner conversation is telling me something else. I want you to turn and talk to someone next to you again about what you are thinking when you see this part. I brought a special friend here to your classroom today to visit with you. You may have seen him on the television. Uh -huh. This is Mr. Rashawn Baker. Hello, how are you doing? School visits like this one to Dodge Park Elementary School in Landover, Maryland, have almost become as much a part of Prince George's County Executive Rashawn Baker's schedule as his morning jogs, budget talks, and just rubbing elbows with constituents as all politicians do. I want the teachers to know, I want the principal to know, and I want other uh, elected officials to know this is where Prince George's County has complete focus. And the best way to show that is where your, where your time is, is where your heart is. In a world filled with instant gratification, improvements in education can come at a much lower pace. It's a slippery slope, but one baker is willing to walk. Oh, that is great. Who likes science? <laughs> wow. There are two things that are happening in this school um, that indicates it's going to do well. One is the length of teachers, who, length of time teachers stay here. And the other is, are they, are teachers able to collaborate at least on a weekly basis with each other so that education becomes seamless? I sometimes wonder if you have the teachers that have the most education and the ones that are most trained and have the certification and additional training, are they going to choose the poor school districts? Or are they going to choose the school districts where they don't have to then play parent to the child? They can actually just teach the child. So if a teacher has the, all the credentials to write her his or her own ticket, are they going to choose the Prince George's County? I actually believe that the reason that highly qualified, highly skilled teachers tend not to go to districts that are low achieving is because honestly, teachers are treated poorly in those districts. Right. I just wanted to be able to ask uh, whether you find this helpful, the ability to come together and, and talk about the students in this collaborative form. It's very helpful. I teach sixth grade, so um, understanding what they've already done in fifth grade and discuss what the strategies he used helped me in, in my instruction. Teachers, when they are properly supported by community organizations, by a principal in a school district that provides the training and the support and the time to plan, to reflect, to revise, to collaborate, can meet these challenges. And it's a great responsibility and a great opportunity to be a teacher and be able to be a change maker in the life of a young person, regardless of who that person is, regardless of where that person comes from. This is really good in math. Mm -hmm. How large do you think the budget for the county is? Can somebody guess? Yes, sir. 
at least 50,000. Well, let's try a little higher. When you have uh, one of the highest foreclosure rates in the country, uh, it's tax-based, it's obviously uh, declining. Those types of things affect education. The way we're going to grow the, the pot of money that we put into education is we've got to expand our, diversify our tax base in the counties. And to me, that's a commercial tax base we're missing. So places like Montgomery County and Arlington can put more money into education because they're not simply relying on residential property taxes. Today's lesson is in doing more with less. The county has been forced to make a series of budget cuts to education, but they're achieving yeah, despite like the odds. It all started when the state of Maryland, tired of the black eye the district was giving the state, replaced a dysfunctional elected board with an appointed body. Since that time, the results, dramatic. Only 42.9% of elementary students were reading proficiently in 2003. Compare that to 81.9% today. Middle school saw a jump from 41.9% to 74.6% today. At the high school level, much the same. In 2003, the graduation rate was 67.3%. Today, it's more than 85. Um, to that point, there are a number of programs that they're trying to implement to really gauge different students. Um, there's some different tracks that they've implemented that almost um, are almost like majors uh, for those of us who have pursued uh, post-secondary options that allow students early on to almost declare a track. I would like to do a culinary arts, be an executive chef, own my own business, restaurants. This year we have uh, 10 school sites that are participating in the programs. We started three this year actually, uh, law education and public service, business and finance, and hospitality and tourism. So far I've just been cooking like hamburger helper, Alfredo, some like, stuff like that, a lot of pasta stuff. Very intense, I call it a college level class. And once the students complete this program, um, they can get credits towards college as well as they can go directly into the workforce. But there are some older programs, uh, such as the Gifted and Talented program, that are, are a bit flawed. So the whole notion of Gifted and Talented, while it has had served some benefit, I don't really see the really benefit now. I think it should be just offered across the board, the curriculum. Yeah. I, think, I think Gifted and Talented, when it's not well implemented, and I, I agree with you, can reinforce the notion, which I don't agree with, that Different people have different capacities. But also what happens is that if you have a talent and a gifted program, and I was in the talent and a gifted program, mm. um, and, but if you have that program, you have a teacher who has to deal with all of the students who are considered the behavior problems, they stick them in one class, and then that teacher has to deal with all of those while the talent and gifted teacher comes to class like, Correct. you know, singing, excited, except for my talent and gifted teachers, because I cut a little bit up. Well, oh, well, see. <laughs> they didn't like me much. I'm gonna, have to, I'm gonna have to ask you to hold on just a minute. I know, I know you're a little tight about that, but we're going to get back to you. <laughs> you're watching NBC District Matters right here on NBC. It's an Education Nation special. Keep it live. We don't just make a sunroof. We make the heavens wide. We don't just make a crossover. We make a statement. The Cadillac SRX. We don't just make luxury cars, we make Cadillacs. Now lease a 2011 SRX for $3.99 a month. Visit CadillacFirst.com for details. It's a beautiful feeling when you shop at Hagerstown, Leesburg Corner, and Queenstown Premium Outlets. You can have it all. Hundreds to, you know, have the best day. It's everything shopping should be. Premium outlets. Shop brilliantly. He wants pancakes, Mom. You got pancakes today? Pancakes it is. What day? 
you know, he's a, he's an African American boy, and you know, we just I wanted him to you know have the best opportunity. We're blessed, you know, financially to be able to you know allow them to go to private school. So at their age that they are now, I think that that'll offer them the best foundation when they get to be high school age. Yeah, I would really prefer for them to be in a public setting, just for the whole social aspect. And while Prince George's County continues to be the most affluent county in the country with an African-American majority, class dynamics continue to affect students and how they deal with social issues. Look, inside the Beltway, a lot of the border communities to D.C., um, and the crime rate is higher, the educational rate is lower, the life expectancy is lower, um, the health statistics are worse, and that area has been neglected historically in Prince George's County. And so, but folks didn't realize that it's all one school system. And if you don't deal with inside the Beltway, their problems are eventually going to impact outside the Beltway. Reverend Lee, I know that you have really been at the forefront of this, and, and so has your church in terms of trying to get into schools and trying to um, change the thought process. What we've attempted to do is, is do exactly what you talked about, which is to be a strength and a resource to the school and teachers. Um, and, and so it eventually started, um, the principal there, Mrs. Garner, has welcomed us with just her open arms. We're going to segue into your peace uh, initiative program that's happening in Stoddard. Mm -hmm. Can you introduce that piece for us? It's a collaborative effort with the United Way, um, had some funding from the um, governor's office, Lieutenant Governor um, Anthony Brown was able to um, just recently present us with the check. Um, and there's a few, a, a few programs coming together um, to do a, a kind of laser-like comprehensive approach at Benjamin Stoddard Middle School and that area for that region. It's what war is, you know. Once you in it, you in it. My mom's a um, PG County educator. She teaches at Beltsville Academic Center. And so some of the stuff she always tells us that you just never know what situations people go home to. So if this is the only safe haven they have to eat, to learn, and to feel free, and to, you know, have a peace of mind, why not bring some greatness around them? Programs like this can turn kids around. We might can't get each and every one of these kids, but a lot of them will do the right thing after being exposed to this type of program. You know, during times like this, I think that young people just kind of sometimes feel like nobody believes in them, but we're trying to get them, one, to believe in themselves. Um, because once they believe in themselves, then whether people leave, believe in them or not, they'll be able to succeed. I loved how they talked about how there was for them back in the day and how things changed for them and how we should always try to do our best. I think today was like a good experience. Like, it showed me that. Like Antoine showed me that like, it's like, you go through a lot of bad things, but you still can achieve from what he did. I'm great. I'm great. You're great. You're great. You're great. We're great. We're great. So be great. So be great. I think seeing role models as human is, is a very, very important piece of the puzzle. And certainly teachers can, and, and they are role models, whether they want to be or not. We are, as teachers, we are role models. You go to class today. Watch what I tell you did. Our parents' role is vital. Um, the parents are our children's first teachers. And they remain their teachers throughout their lifetime. You know what I mean? You can never move beyond teaching your children, no matter what the age is. Once you get to high school, it's no longer your household that's determining your views. And you're able to go out to school and go out and see your teachers and see why education is so important. And you're able to make that decision for yourself. That decision-making process can become even more difficult for students as they enter the classroom, oftentimes turning into a balancing act between excelling in the books while remaining cool. Well, I think that relates back to the whole notion of the gifted and talented program. There's been a lot of research done in sociology that's saying that this acting white notion doesn't happen as much as we think it happens. And when it does happen, it causes, it works almost in the reverse. It causes students to work harder and to try harder to overcome that notion. It's not a negative, um, it doesn't, it doesn't affect their education in a negative kind of way. But, they, but because you have a gifted and talented program that's ideally thought of as a white program or thought of as a white program, that's why you did hear this notion of acting white. Do you see that at all with the young people that you work with? Not necessarily as much as kind of acting white, um, but just as you're a nerd. Right. 
But what we've also seen is that there are some instances in which we've been able to shape um, in which it has become the cool thing um, to be smart. Mm -hmm. um, and you've been able to shape an atmosphere in which young people are celebrated. Um. What's next for Prince George's County Schools? Hear it straight from the community. Coming up next. Two sofas, regardless of size, only $7.98 for both pieces. Skirted and non-skirted, in tan or... and two lamps. Feature is brand. I think the schools are progressing in such a way uh, because of the accountability factor. Um, I think they're progressing in such a way that uh, we're going to supersede all that has ever happened in Prince George's County before. I, I can feel it. You know, you know what I'm saying? You can, I've been in education long enough now wherein I know that um, we're on the brink of doing some things that have never been done before for this county. Welcome back to District Matters here on NBC. As we kind of wrap up this conversation, I really want to look and focus on where should we be headed? My question is, um, how do we expose our young people to these careers, into this curriculum that truly allows them to, to compete with their peers across the board, regardless of circumstances that really are out of their control? We're all product of our experience, but the teacher has a tremendous opportunity because school is a huge part of everyone's experience. So where I hope we're headed is a focus on the part of our training of teachers and our teaching of students, a focus on the long term, and I hope we continue to ask the question, what does it take for the people in our education system to thrive? Not to get through the textbook, but to thrive. The second thing, though, I think is, um, from my perspective, is a need to educate the faith community and community organizations about the impact they can have in school and community. And it doesn't take a grant to do it. There are ways in which the human resources of a church, not just the financial resources, can also help to strengthen uh, what's happening at schools. Dr. Marsh, uh, dealing and in, in influencing the larger community as a whole may be the most difficult part of this process. But how can we, as conscious citizens, do our part to kind of uh, create an environment that's most conducive to the best interests of our young people. I think there's two major ways that we can do that. Once we have, and we talked about it earlier, we have to celebrate our differences. We have to look at their different class backgrounds, different racial backgrounds, different gender backgrounds for that matter. We need to celebrate our differences and across the board, we need to have higher expectations for our students. Just because you come from a lower class background, just because you're a, a young female student, doesn't mean that expectations should be any lower than any other student. All right, great. Um, I appreciate you guys joining uh, me today and hearing each one of your perspectives. Very unique and I think very, very important to this overall conversation. Do you know what you want to be when you grow up? Yes. A pilot. Well, I definitely want to pursue my undergraduate degree in a combination between um, biomedical engineering and international relations. Sometimes people say I overdo, but kids are involved, you know, and somebody did it for me. There's a lot that we can control, but what we can control, we must act on. For those of you who have been blessed with a great education, consider it an obligation. For those of you who have achieved despite the odds, consider it an opportunity. I challenge you to get out today and play an active role in the young people's lives in our community. Yeah. Okay, so I'm trying to chime in, and you're like, you're like, go, go to commercial break. Almost like, you know, try hey, to Hey, we got a rap. Producer <laughs> said rap. <laughs> rap, rap, rap. NBC4, your official Redskins television station. It's Empire's whole house sale. Buy two rooms of carpet or flooring and get the rest of your rooms free. You can get carpet for the living room, flooring for the kitchen, tile for the bathroom. Free when you buy two rooms. Shop at home for leading brands like Shaw, Armstrong, and Stainmaster. You'll get professional installation with no interest till 2013. Our whole house sale won't last long. Buy two rooms, get the rest free. 800-588-2300-EMPIRE Today. Foresight, the ability to plan for and manage resources. Foresight is what helps my fiscal year maintain its momentum. It's all about timing. Graduate School USA helps make mine perfect. 
Success in the future means careful planning now. Graduate School USA provides a curriculum of government-centered specialties as well as the flexibility you're looking for when allocating your agency's year-end resources. Opportunity begins with foresight and learning when to act on it. Hello? Kelly Regis, is TD Bank open this early? Of course. Hello? Kelly Regis. Does TD Bank have good rates on mortgages? Yes. Hello? Kelly Regis, can I get a TD credit card? Yes. Kelly, Kelly, Kelly. Regis, if I were to check my balance. Regis, when I said TD Bank has live 24-7 customer service, I didn't mean me. Oh. Hey, does uh, mustard go bad? Everything you want from the only bank you need. TD Bank, America's most convenient bank. It's a beautiful feeling when you shop at Hagerstown, Leesburg Corner, and Queenstown Premium Outlets. You can have it all. Hundreds of legendary brands, abundant selection, and real savings of 25 to 65 percent every day. It's everything shopping should be. Premium Outlets. Shop brilliantly. Coming up on Nonstop Scene DC, the history of rock and roll on wheels. The place that's celebrating 40 years of music history. Plus, Hollywood in Washington, the new television drama that's filming near Capitol Hill. And how golf fans get to play around without even leaving the bar. Nonstop Scene DC. Depend for Women is now peach. Looks and fits like underwear. Same great protection. Depend. Good morning. Great day. I ate breakfast and got heartburn. Third day this week, so I took my heartburn pill and some antacids. We're having Mexican tonight, so another pill then? Unless we eat later, then pill later. If I get a snack now, pill now. Skip the snack, pill later. Late dinner, pill now? I have got heartburn in my head. Stop the madness of treating frequent heartburn. It's simple, with Prilosec OTC. One pill a day, 24 hours, zero heartburn. No heartburn in the first place? Great. What are Steve Jobs' secrets to success? A special 2020, Friday on ABC. My electric bill was breaking the bank. So to save some money, I trained this team of guinea pigs to row this tiny boat. They generate electricity, which lets me surf the web all day. Took me six months to train each one. Eight months to get the little chubby one to yell row. It was kind of strange. Such a simple word. Row. There's an easier way to save. Get online. Go to Geico.com. Get a quote. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. No, don't avoid Beth. You're rocking new glasses. And a lot of spandex. In a good way. Now get two complete pairs of eyeglasses, including no-line bifocals, just $99. Vision works. That works. That social security claim just got denied. Click it. Those creditors are breathing down your neck. Click it. That speeding truck bashed your bumper. Click it. BaltimoreLaw.tv. When you need information about the law. I'm a curious seeker. I am a chemistry aficionado. Diphenhydramine, magnesium hydroxide, athlete's foot. Yes. I'm a people pleaser. If elected, I promise flu shots for all. I'm a walking medical dictionary. Congratulations, Virginia. In flame uvula. I'm Virginia. I'm a target pharmacist, and I'm here to answer your questions. Okay, advanced team. Marketing ideas. Oh, I got it. Anyone. Charlie. Fish. 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 Oh, fish. 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 Next. Advanced documents. We live in this stuff. Advanced. The document specialist. We live and breathe this stuff. It's the fish. Have a document. Get new flooring for every room of your house during Empire's whole house sale. Buy two rooms of flooring and get the rest of your rooms free. Cha-ching! Shop at home for leading brands like Armstrong and Shaw. Get professional installation even next day. Buy two rooms, get the rest free with no interest till 2013. Our whole house sale won't last long. Buy two rooms, get the rest free. 800-588-2300-EMPIRE Today. 
Yahoo News, the world's number one news site on the web. Together now with ABC News, the country's premier news brand. Introducing America's new number one digital news source. It's time to see the whole picture. Just before he passed away, Steve Jobs biographer Walter Isaacson asked him a question. Why did he spend the last couple of years of his life sharing so much after saying private for so long? Well, Jobs replied, I wanted my kids to know me. I wasn't always there for them.